What's going on, me one family? So, um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep up this pace of two videos every 12 hours. It'll probably go to one video, roughly 30 to 45 minutes, every 24 hours, just so I can probably keep up with the pace. Because I do have the day to day. I do have my business running. I finally got my merch in for my other business and getting that taken care of. So um, I apologize if it seems like I'm slowing down. I just don't want to rush in and get you guys just anything out there. Um, you see there's less commentary on the last two videos. I want to make sure I be able to put my input in. Uh, so, you know, this I'm not just doing this for fly by night. All right. So going forward, it'll be every 24 hours. But I'll make sure you guys get the content that keeps you on the know. Unless something crazy happens, then I'll, I'll post like a short or something. I'm going to keep talking about Lucy and Grange. Because while Sean Combs is a monster, it pales in comparison to the work of Sir Lucian Grange. And major news outlets refuse to mention his name. Hmm. Lucian Grange is the Jewish 64-year-old CEO of Universal Music Group. Many consider Grange the most powerful person in music. In 2020, Billboard named Grange the first ever executive of the decade after he topped the magazine's Power 100 list as the most powerful person in the music business in 2013, 2015, 2016, and 2019. He is the only person to ever hold that distinction more than once and for consecutive years. He must be exceptionally amazing at his job. As we begin to have these conversations about the insidious nature of the entertainment industry, of the rampant X trafficking that takes place, of the rampant edophilia that takes place, and the mass exploitation of artists, it's amazing that Sir Lucian Grange never comes up in the conversation, but this is intentional. But today I want to talk about music industry connection to Zionism and the Zionist influence on the music industry. The Universal Music Group is the world's largest music company. The CEO, Lucien Grange, a supporter of the Friends of the Israeli Offense Forces, heads a company with significant power. His wife, Carolyn Grange, funds the Zionist Federation and the Conservative Party. Billionaire Haim Saban also has his own subsidiary through Universal and is known to be one of the largest donors to the Friends of the IOF. So this means as we have conversations about Israel and the conflict taking place in the Middle East and we talk about boycotting Starbucks and other places, it seems the exploitation of artists right here in the States in hip hop has become a cash cow that Grange and other executives are leveraging to fund genocide. <laughs> Just take a moment to think about that. The, the money, the wealth that is produced through hip hop is extracted from black communities and i'm talking about hip-hop in particular now it's extracted from from communities of color and that money is then invested into genocide and conflict in the middle east it kind of reminds me of the conflict in the congo where uh israeli and jewish uh landowners are exploiting the mining of diamonds and taking that wealth to invest in the genocide. Yep. Tonight, All right. a hazard listen in the to air. this. Listen. Thick gray and orange smoke billows from a chemical facility in Conyers, Georgia. Good afternoon. My name is Marion McDaniel, and I am the fire chief for Rockdale County Fire Rescue. As you know, this event occurred, uh, started at 5.30 this morning with a small fire on the roof area of the structure of BioLab. Uh, the fire was contained, uh, and listen. then the water supply secured. After a fire today forcing nearby residents to evacuate. Officials say around 5 a.m. today, as employees were inside, a sprinkler malfunctioned, causing a it chemical said a sprinkler to start the blaze, which is now out right? and was contained to the roof. They... During the time they were offloading the product from the building, but they offloading product around 12 noon. Uh, for the past two or three hours, we've been battling that fire to where we now have it out. Uh, once again, the water is secure and we're waiting to clean up some of the debris so we can commence back to moving the product out of the building. Um, as you see behind me, what you're seeing is still that chemical reaction from that water reactive chemical product. And once we can get it out, it was still off gas. But once again, the fire is out and that is the status of where we are right now. No one was injured. The Environmental Protection Agency is now conducting air monitoring law enforcement pulling out respirators as a precaution. Is this Listen. dangerous to lung health? Is, is, is that any well, we have the EPA 
and EPD, Environmental Protection Agency and Department, are on scene. They are actually over the, on the location and they are making assessments as to that. The first chemical scare at the BioLab facility Listen that manufactures this. pool and spa products, according to the U.S. Chemical Safety Board. In 2020, a plume of hazardous chemicals was released. So this happened in 2020. Since I've been a part of Rockdale County for seven years, this is probably the third incident of this magnitude. No timetable yet on when the area Things will be safe. Trained. It's a chemical. That is toxic chlorine gas generated by the decomposition of trichloroisocyanuric acid. TCCA for short, it's a disinfectant commonly used in pools. Because when it's fully dissolved in water, it slowly decomposes into hypochlorous acid, aka bleach, as well as cyanuronic acid. But when it's only partially dissolved, that's when you run into issues like what happened here. When it comes in contact with a small amount of water, it still decomposes but into something more dangerous. It breaks down into pure chlorine gas as well as nitrogen trichloride, which is extremely explosive. And so BioLab's faulty sprinkler system is what triggered this fire. And this is not the first time this has happened with this company. The U.S. Chemical Safety and Hazard Investigation Board previously investigated an incident that happened with this company back in 2020. This same compound was released into the environment after their Louisiana location was partially damaged by a category for Hurricane Laura in 2020. And a similar incident happened in 2017 from flood damage from a different hurricane, Hurricane Harvey. So if you are in the current affected area, please be aware of these symptoms. My mom, who lives near Congress, is currently experiencing chest pain as a result of the chlorine exposure. And the best course of action is to move to a well-ventilated area and get some fresh air. And considering BioLab's repeat offender for incidences like this, it might be time for a class action lawsuit, in my opinion. Because the compound in question, TCCA, is not currently covered under OSHA guidelines. Either that needs to be changed or charges need to be brought against this company. If it's going to cost these shipping companies billions of dollars, with a B, because I've seen multiple figures. I've seen up to five billion a day and I've seen two billion a week. So it varies, but nonetheless, billions of dollars. Then why can't y'all just pay them folks what they want? You would rather pay claims up to billions of dollars instead of paying your employees a livable wage? If those docks, if those ports shut down, it's going to severely impact the economy. You would much rather severely impact the economy than pay your workers a livable wage? Hey, so uh, this is insane. <laughs> what in the hell? I know people not going to agree with me, but this port strike, it ain't got nothing to do with their wages. I used to work at the port doing security, and I used to work alongside I ILA. The people was making $36, $52, $60 an hour. Like, their wages are, they good. It got everything to do with the machines. They mad because of the machines there. It ain't got nothing to do with their wages. This is about the automation of the port. This is about the machines that they now got at the port. This is about them feeling like they're being replaced with technology. This ain't got nothing to do with their pay because they pay is pretty good. And I haven't worked for the port in like, if my son 10, I haven't worked for the port in like five years, six years. And they was getting paid $52 an hour, $36, $42 an hour. They were getting paid dang good. So this ain't about the pay. This about them being replaced with machines. I, I'm, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. A strike could cost up to $4.5 billion a day. Everything from canned goods. I feel like rich people are trying to play chicken with our lives. I feel like this is an unnecessary risk, no reward scenario. I feel like if they just went ahead and said, hey, you're not going to be as rich as I am, so we can give you a couple extra pieces of uh, pieces of bread, so that way you'll be whole, that way your family can eat, I'd like to be a hell of a lot better than, fuck those poor people that work on the ports for us. Who cares if they want more wages, they want less automation, who gives a shit? You know what, it's all about what we want, because we're the ones with the money. Well... You know what happens when poor people starve? They tend to eat the rich. We're less than 24 hours out from the potential port strike. Here's what you need to know. I'm gonna move my head so you can see. You can pause this, screenshot it, whatever. Here are the ports that are gonna be affected. So tonight at 12.01 is when the strike will take place. You're not gonna wake up tomorrow and the shelves are gonna be bare at stores. 
You're not going to wake up tomorrow and not be able to find food or medicine or clothing, retail, all that stuff. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen overnight. However, experts say for one day of a port closure creates a five to 10 day backlog. It's already said that cruise lines, military and medical will not be affected. One of the first things that you're going to realize are not on the shelves anymore, bananas. Then I also saw grapes, uh, citrus, other fresh fruits. Now, here's the bad news. In the last video I made, a lot of people said, okay, well, they'll just get their other ways. They'll just reroute to the West Coast. That equals time. What does time equal? Money. These companies are not trying to shell out all of this extra money, although they haven't. And unfortunately, as of last night, the railways have already said they're not going to be taking on refrigerated goods. As I've said in every other video, I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm trying to empower you to know what's going on. There are people I've talked to and they still have no idea this is happening. And it's going to happen tonight. I can't believe that these folks would rather waste billions of dollars on damaged goods than to give these folks they raise. The damn port strike started this morning at 12 a.m. These folks, all these folks wanted was a, a, a livable wage and and, 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 and and to get rid of automation because automation taking up the jobs. And I mean, that's, that's more money wasting on, on those, on that equipment. And, and it could be going to the workers. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really comprehending why they doing all of this i mean i, I kind of got my theory of, of what's going on i feel like it's all a part of the plan they want they want to create chaos this is about to start the bullshit you know what i mean it's, it's crazy to me y'all want these folks to work like a dog for a little of nothing like these folks got some crazy ass positions like this, this ain't no easy work you know what i mean like this is where we get all our products. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gonna be... I, like, why would y'all do that? Why wouldn't y'all just give them folks their money? Give them what they asking for. Like, we already struggling hard enough with, with the cost of living and shit. Now it's gonna make everything go up. Everything already high. <laughs> like, at some point, we ain't gonna be able to afford to breathe, bitch. Like, come on. Like, hospital supplies medication food water some people got allergy uh food allergies and shit and they need certain kind of foods and milks like y'all ain't thinking about people with health problems oxygen tanks all kinds of shit like y'all fucked up you know folks what the hell they asking for man damn the bosses left but told the workers that if they didn't come in during a hurricane they would be fired the bosses left but told the workers that if they left before the flood waters got waist high that they would be fired the bosses left but told the workers to pick between their lives and their livelihoods and the workers lost their lives. This is a story coming out of Tennessee, Impact Plastics. Family members of missing people are claiming that their family members went into work because they were told that they had to and now they are missing. Five of them are confirmed dead. And what is occurring and what is pissing me off so bad right now is that the bosses are alive to tell the tale. They put out a statement categorically denying the allegations saying that they told them to leave. They had a translator, they had somebody saying in English, they had somebody saying it in Spanish but what I will say is if what the family members and if what people are saying is true and the bosses decided to jeopardize the lives of workers just to make an extra dollar I hope they lose everything they have and I hope they rot in a prison cell workers are not expendable okay workers are not pawns for you to use just so you can stuff your pockets our lives have value our lives matter i truly hope that the people that are currently missing are found hurricane helene wreaked havoc all over the southeast there are parts of florida georgia tennessee north carolina that will never be the same because of the storm there are people dead people that have lost everything and i truly hope that they find these people out in tennessee so congress did not approve a 10 billion dollar increase to fema's budget while we're in the middle of a hurricane okay they didn't add it they said no so essentially they're cutting FEMA's budget and now they're on recess for the next six weeks. Did you know that? Did you know that the, the, the United States Congress, they're not there right now. If you need them, they're gone. Okay. They are on recess for the next six weeks. This is their schedule. Okay. Do you see this? They just got back from summer break not long ago and now they're on another six week break while people are stuck still. Okay. So this hurricane is bad. It is horrible. The south side of Atlanta got hit so hard. 
And we have a family friend who's doing search and rescue with helicopters. There's people in North Carolina who still don't have power, who still don't have water, who are stuck. Like just absolutely stuck. People are fighting over food. People are fighting over resources. It's getting bad. And they cut FEMA's budget and left. Did y'all hear about them sundown towns that just got swept away in the hurricane? Well, I bet y'all didn't know. Oh, you did? Okay, 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 good. I bet y'all didn't know that just days prior to them getting swept away in a hurricane, which, by the way, only the sundown towns got affected as badly as we see it on our timelines. Yeah, but just days prior to that, guess what? On Telegram, right, apparently there's a group um i can't remember the name off my off the top of my head but they just got caught by homeland security and the fbi now apparently they word on the street is allegedly they've been planning to do uh like incite a race war here in america the plan was to incite a global race war uh, baby it's people from all over the globe in that group in that telegram group look it up it's here on on tiktok they got a video about it as well apparently word on the street is is that they was teaching each other how to make them kablooies blueies, um the the big kablooies blueies, so that the, the ones that got pipes in them they mm -hmm, they was teaching each other how to do that how to how to do them acts of i can't say it because of community guidelines but use your imagination that it goes in a box and you package it up and you leave it okay it may come with a detonator um, they was teaching each other how to do that. They was giving each other advice on how to fulfill these tasks. And basically, it was all due to the election. It was going to like, start kicking off around the election. As you can tell, we're close to the election. So for 30 days, things were, start, were supposed to kick off here, there, everywhere. They all plan to do it globally. And they was just caught by Homeland Security. Now, how is it that y'all was just caught by Homeland Security? And then like literally days later after you're caught by Homeland Security... All of a sudden, three hurricanes sweep through, and the only thing that gets taken out is them sundown towns. Baby, God is trying to tell you something. Let go of that hate from your heart, because it is driving you into the deepest, darkest pits of hell. We not even worried about y'all like this. Like, what is wrong with y'all? Baby, I know y'all hate to lose. Y'all really do hate to lose. Oh, my God. They're like, who does shit like this? Who that, that y'all, they was going to start here in America and it was going to become a global thing. It was just going to be stuff happening globally. And all of it starting with America and then just going everywhere to every other country. They was going, there's people from literally every country you could think of in that group. And they are pissed that the colored folks is waking up and we on our shit. We on our grind. We doing what the fuck we got to do. They pissed right now. They don't want to see no black woman in that office. So they was ready to, child, they was ready to insurrection Armageddon style. Yeah. God trying to tell y'all something. I, maybe y'all should listen. Y'all keep talking about Project 2025. You need to worry about World War III. I'm going to let y'all in on a secret. They put in straight white men back in the military commercials. Yeah. I just watched a 30-second advertisement with nothing but mud, blood, and cockish regions. Straight Kyle variants. I'm talking not a single gay, black, or neurodivergent person on there. Not even so much as a woman. I haven't seen a poster with a non-white soldier in six months. Not even so much as a mulatto. You mean to tell me Corbin Blue is booked and busy all 2024? Political correctness go right out the window when things get real. They know what side they bread is buttered on. Y'all remember like three years ago when they tried to drop that one advertiser with like the lieutenant jumping into Rainbow River swimming to freedom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's out the window, boy. They done tore down every single poster of a Hellcat or Dodge Durango in the recruitment offices. It's straight F-150s and Raptors. Cooling them cornbread and corn-fed boys. You understand me? The commercials used to be like America for everybody. Now they talking about some defend your home, Americans. Like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> And by the time y'all figure it out, it's going to be too late. People at Call of Duty literally came out and told y'all, hey, we are partially funded by the military industrial complex. And you don't think it's a coincidence that they drop in a new game with old maps this year? Gee, Willikers, Rust, that Rust map created Patriots. They know what they're doing. <laughs> the darkest part of it is that it's hard not to look at it and say, this looks like it's targeting black people. Mm. 
-hmm. Like this looks like this is intentionally an operation to keep the black peoples of America degenerate and and depraved and poor, mm. right? And it obviously targets everyone, sure. but it is it overtly targets black people. Yeah. And then you think about how like the crack cocaine epidemic of the eighties was very literally the CIA flying cocaine in to Bill Clinton's airport in Mena, Arkansas, and then and then sending it to L.A. to where a guy named Freeway Ricky Ross was selling it out to the black communities. The CIA started and funded and and like fully like created the crack epidemic. Um, so there's like layers of like who wh what's what do we have against the black community and who's behind that? And I'm I'm not insinuating anything and I do not have the answer. It's just the more I see it, the more I can't help but think that like that is overt and it's everywhere and it's dark. Um, so I think you're exactly right. That I think that controlling the music industry is not just, you know, that surface level of control. I think it is very much to control the culture of our children and yeah. the culture of our rising leaders, um, all of us. And they brought you in here and gave you bottle service, gave you a table, sat down a bunch of these chicks with fake right next to you and just like gave you everything you could ever want and you never had it before there's a lot of dudes that would be like i would do anything to have more of this mm. and our system incentivizes those guys rising and a lot of our institutions that select like the harvards of our world like the think tanks of our world they select the people that will do anything they're told in order to get the grade that'll do anything right, they're told right, in right. order to get the marks and those types of people they all want that money that fame that success the celebrity on our screens teaches us to want the money the fame, the success, the rappers that they are promoting, mm. that they're selecting and putting mm -hmm. on our screens and in our ears, they promote like the money, the drugs, the women, the yeah. guns, that culture raises this whole generation of men that are incentivized to want to be corrupt. Because if you just let your morals go yeah. and you succeed, you can have all this corruption and more, and you don't even need to be blackmailed because you actually just want it. Wow. And that's so what... the blackmail only exists for the people that don't already fall in line. Yeah, that's honestly, I thought that was going to be another motivation for controlling the music industry was to control control exactly or at least influence it. cultural zeitgeist right in the 100%. ways you just described because the thing anyone that has kids knows that you can't tell a kid something's not cool that's right that's the it's the so one thing you can't tell them. yeah is when a kid decides especially with music with with like sports stars yeah. with movie stars if your kid decides that lil wayne is cool yeah doesn't matter what you say they're gonna start doing like like sip and pretty yeah. soon <laughs> And kids all across America, and yeah. it's it's atrocious. And the like it's another level or layer to the psyop, right? Exactly. You're getting them when they're young. Exactly. For an example, my mom, she's American. I don't know what part of Africa she was from. My dad, he's Ghanaian. He's American, like. But at the end of the day, saying, I, I don't know. They're American. But you wouldn't say that to a Jamaican. But they're African Jamaican? American, though. Would you like, would you say a Jamaican don't know what part of Africa he's from? Jamaicans are Caribbean, so they already had their own. Like would you say? Would you say he, he don't know what part of Africa he's from? But he know where he comes from. He comes from Jamaica. Wait, a wait, Jamaica wait, is wait. from Jamaica, right? Yes. An American is from where? An African American is from Africa and America. I think the main issue we have with this subject is that when discussed publicly in a public forum on podcasts, I think both people are not educated enough to have a conversation that that actually equals an outcome that is educational on either front. But let's break down why. African-American, the term African-American is so confusing for Africans. I said before that immigrants, especially black immigrants, view America as a white country. Africans view and look at the USA like they do the UK and they see black people and they say, oh, well, you can't be from there. You must be an immigrant. And using the term African in front of American confuses them even more as they as, as they associate being African, which is what they are, with being from their homeland, when in fact, being African-American just means we are Af of African descent of the original slaves, foundational black Americans. The term African-American is used because descendants of slaves in America are roughly from around 11 regions of Africa. If you look at this picture, this is my DNA breakdown of which half of it is African-American. I have European ancestry and African ancestry, which most of us do because our ethnic group was created here in America we were either originally from Africa or we were the product of African slaves procreating with each other in America. So for over 500 years, we were a product of America. 
I think the funniest thing is that if you actually knew the history of the transatlantic slave trade, you would know that none of the countries in Africa that exist today existed when the transatlantic slave trade was going on or was occurring. All of the countries in Africa are a product of colonialism. So at the time that my ancestors were taken from Africa to the Americas and all of the diaspora in the Americas, there was no Nigeria, there was no Ghana, there was no Senegal. There were tribes, there were kingdoms, there were regions, yes. But what do you want me to claim if it's not just Africa? They don't do this to Afro-Cubans, Afro-Brazilians, because they associate black countries with being African. They associate the economic level of these Caribbean countries with being African because they're poor. It's a sad thing, sad reality, but I truly believe that's the reason they associate themselves with them. To have lack of history and education on how we exist in this country is the reason these conversations exist. She continually says things like, oh, the Caribbeans are in their own bowl, they're Caribbean. And you don't understand what, what being from the Caribbean means. It is a different boat stop on the transatlantic slave trade that brought slaves from West Africa to the Americas, all of the Americas. The majority of black people outside of Africa were brought to Brazil. Brazil has the highest amount of black people outside of Africa. But you're not questioning that. You question African Americans because, like I said before, you view America and Americans as white people in a white place. I think that they think Caribbean people are more in tune with their Africanness because they are majority black places. Once slavery ended, they all got their independence. Yes, they still were colonies of Europe, but they are majority black, whereas America is majority white. We are American. We are from America. The same way that you respect somebody being from Jamaica or Haiti or Brazil is the same way you have to respect someone being American from African American from America. And to continuously sit there and disparage and talk about African Americans and you're comparing the you're comparing yourself as African immigrants to the lowest poorest, the poorest of the poor of black Americans. Black Americans are the richest black people around the world by far. The most educated, the most business owners, the most money by far is in the hands of black Americans. The black American dollar is the strong, one of the strongest dollars. And to answer your question before I go, if you want to educate yourself, educate yourself as to why black people are in the economic system that they're in, place that they're in. Things like Black Wall Street, things like the Tulsa Massacre, just Google it. Seneca Village, educate yourself into the country that you're in. Understand why you're even able to go to school here and stop being ignorant, especially since you have an African-American mother. Shame on you. In Africa, are you from? I'm from America. That's what we're saying. Just what like a Jamaican. Let me tell you something, bro. The Africa that our ancestors supposedly come from does not exist anymore. It's long gone. Stop asking that dumb ass shit. Stop asking dumb questions. I thought y'all was smart. Apparently not. You asked a dumb question. You asked the same dumb question over and over and over again because you're xenophobic. Okay? There's 50 million of us here. 10% are y'all. That's the estimation around 10 million immigrants versus 40 million native born black Americans who built fucking the United States. Y'all are not fucking outpacing us. The, the, math, the math ain't mathing, bro. What's not clicking to y'all? That doesn't make any sense. It's an illusion that is told to y'all. Cause y'all come over here and accept crumbs. These, the shit that y'all getting, these are crumbs to us. These are crumbs to America. And we know it's crumbs and we're like, uh, we built this shit, y'all need to run a fucking check. Y'all like, oh, we got running water. Oh, wow. I don't know what they're complaining about, bitch. We're a first world country, I'm sorry. What are you talking about, bro? The math ain't math then, bro. What are you talking about? And then my cousins down south, you better let them know they're not outpacing y'all with all these black American gated communities and all these millionaires down there, bro. You better fucking let them know just because these dumbass motherfuckers go to college. We've been going to college since the 1800s. It was my bloodline that created open heart surgery and created the first integrated fucking hospital here in Chicago. What are y'all talking about, bro? Y'all are fucking getting gassed up off of an illusion. Nah, bring that back, bro. Ghana, fucking Nigeria, South Africa, all these countries are like 60, 50 plus years fucking old. Our grandparents are older than these countries. Our ethnicity, all right, black American. That means we've been here for seven, over seven lifetimes. Do you know how long that is? 
What's not clicking? Y'all don't know how to do motherfucking math or something? I thought y'all went to college. What's not clicking? Y'all can't do math? You know how long seven lifetimes is? It's older than Nigeria's independence. That's how fucking long it is. When we say we're American, that's what the fuck we mean. Um, what's your nationality? I'm Cubanita and Italiana. Yeah. I like black women, like, you know. Um, we are there's black, nothing, but that's yes, okay. no problem. I mean, like, <laughs> She's no black. Problem. Don't you just love when you see multiracial people use their blackness for their own convenience? Because the moment that their brother said, look, I'm looking for a black woman. Now all of a sudden, well, you know, we're black too. It's about how she said it. Yeah, I'm Cuban. Yeah, I'm Italian. And when you're not picked, oh, you know I'm black too. And shout outs to my brothers and sisters who come from the Latin community or the Latin diasporas of the world that they know that they're African first. Hence why Afro-Cuban, Afro-Puerto Rican, Afro-Dominican, Afro- list goes on. Because they not only know the importance, but they also, they are proud to know that they are African first. They know that they are proud to be black first. Then the nationality comes second. There's nothing wrong about being proud of who you are and where you come from. But if you use blackness as an inkling for your own benefit or your own convenience or something of an excuse of your actions that you do, respectfully or disrespectfully, fuck out of my face now which one of you negroes hurt this red bones uh feelings which one y'all broke her heart because we she was doing good but then she was like yeah we tired of black men too well excuse me she has some good points did she go off into some bed wench divester type dialogue i think i think whoever Ty tyrone you broke her heart your POS for that, bro. Y'all yeah. seen this video? Well, it was a big deal. My older brother going off to the big boy school and my mom sat us down. She said, if you're ever in trouble, if you're ever in trouble out there in the real world, look for a black woman. My no. And I know you mean well with this video, sir. I know you mean well, but no. Black women have always helped the entire world. And yet, when we need help, no one's here for us. Did you know that about black women? Did your mother tell you that also about black women? We are tired. We're tired, <laughs> okay? We're not saving anybody other than ourselves, meaning black women and black girls at this point. I'm not even interested in helping the men in my own community. They can't even get any help from me. <laughs> and on another note, men should not be asking women for help. Men should not be asking women for help. <laughs> no. So please understand that for generation after generation after generation, black women have done everything. We have done the most. We are the most successful in our own community. Um, the black community is still standing because of black women, not because of the men. Because if it was up to the men, it would have been torn down a long time ago. Man, I, know it. <laughs> I love my black women, but y'all be going so hard and so in on each other. Men only typically go out to other men when there's a disrespect issue. And even at that, we are more likely to work with other men that we don't like and get a job done because we understand the job needs to get done. That women work with women. All right. Now, I'll be the first ones. Mm. And look at you like, mm. Dudes, we come in. Like, hey, bro. Bro. Hey, bro, you always ask you, bro. Like, well, we'll do that. So, I'm going to let them make it, though. Because when y'all done broke her heart, you selfish. We have been busting our butts our entire lives generation after generation we're tired sir we're tired we need people to help us <laughs> okay so my question for you would be are you willing to help a black woman that's my question for you and i'm going to tag you in this video so you can respond okay but no we're not helping anybody else we're done we're tired now, clearly the sister is not FBA, but she used some of that black sense. Uh, like, mm, 
Some may write about this whole situation. Listen in. I was just coming from outside to head to my apartment. Why this guy said, hold the door, hold the door. I closed that door so fast in his face. And I said, he's like, you just not gonna hold the door. I left my keys upstairs. You can open the door with an app. I said, show me the app. Show, show me the app on your phone. He's like, what app? That's how I know you don't live here. Cause you can, you can open the door with an app on your phone. He's like, you really not gonna let me in? I said, no. I stood there for a good minute, looking him up and down. We just in a stalemate. He's like, never mind, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. You just look so pretty. I just wanted to get your number and talk to you. Okay. Yeah. You gotta follow your instincts, lady. My instinct said, he don't look like he live here. <laughs> That may be that may be a wicked thing to think, but I was just, like my instinct was like that nigga don't look like he can live here. Close the door, and right I was exactly. If hip hop is black culture and not street culture, as many Hispanic Americans believe it is, then that would mean that black culture is trash. This shit get bad. This shit get rough. You pay what? It came back what? Nah, something ain't not enough. If you still don't believe that integration is responsible for ruining the black business. Watch this. Prior to desegregation, actually my parents are in that generation in which they weren't allowed to um, patronize certain kinds of restaurants. In that particular environment, if you were a black owned restaurant, um, you were guaranteed a certain number of customers that didn't have any other option um, of eating in other establishments that they wanted to eat out. Of course integration was great, but economically it had a deleterious impact on our community. The first punch was we were so happy to have the opportunity to shop at Woolworth and Sears that we felt like we was sticking it to somebody <laughs> by going there. Hey, I'm going to spend all my money with you and show you right. that, that my money is just as green. green. Then the second punch was that um, those retailers started recruiting my husband and me. So when I'm coming up in the 70s, the big goal of any mama, any big mama, is for her daughter or her son to get a good job at a big white company. <laughs> So our would-be entrepreneurs, our talent to 10th, as we call them in our community, we flocked to corporate America, and, and they got all our money, and they got all our talent. We began to go out of the 20 generations of slavery. We started to emerge and started to have this period of time where the communities began to come together. They were still segregated during the Jim Crow era, but we had the local physician, we had the local business, we had a place where you can go and buy goods and services. You had to go and get educated, so we had to have our own historically black colleges and universities. And so you can go and get a PhD, and all of that isn't unprecedented. We have always had mom and pop stores in our community, whether it was to sell ice cream or sell tools and that was how we made our money and typically we ran businesses together as husband and wives family the children would be there helping the family was strong marriages were strong what happened is there are some unintended consequences when the civil rights era happened and as a result was desegregation not necessarily integration the unintended consequences of that struggle is that the breakdown of businesses started to take place black folk had a hundred times more before social integration hit i grew up in winston salem north carolina we were looking for this social integration because we had our own businesses there my family was part of one that had the only black bus line in the entire united states we had over 500 buses. All of our mechanics were black. All of our drivers were blacks. Electricians were black. Everything was black. We had that from 1927 up to about 1967. We don't kill our buses. Right. Social integration. You also are talking about Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King going down to Alabama, want to integrate the bus lines. Integrate whose bus lines? White bus lines. We had two cab companies in Winston Salem. Whites had two cab companies. They had the Bluebird and the Yellow Cab. When that integration movement started, what they wanted to do? Blacks didn't want to ride black cabs anymore. They wanted to ride in white cabs. We had our own movie theaters. There was a Lincoln and Lafayette theater in every major city and made every black community in America. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Blacks didn't want to go to the white black theaters and want to go to the white theaters. Tulsa's Black Wall Street, from the name Negro Wall Street, given by Booker T. Washington, established wholly by black families, business leaders, and entrepreneurs less than 50 years after slavery ended. The district was so successful that a dollar would stay within the district an estimated 19 months before being spent elsewhere. Not only did black Americans want to contribute to the success of their own shops, but there were also racial segregation laws that prevented them from shopping anywhere other than Greenwood. In barely two years after the 1921 massacre, every house and structure was rebuilt, with more than 100 more African-American businesses in place than were there before the riot itself, until the 1960s, when desegregation allowed blacks to shop in areas from which they were previously restricted. They don't want any more Negro business, and that Negro business which exists, they say that that should be integrated. Well, if it's integrated, what has he got? He wants to lose everything. That type of propaganda, is the brainchild of the communists. The NAACP collects millions of dollars through racial incitement. But what do they do with that money? They do not spend one single cent to build any factories or shops to create jobs. 
They do not want to spend one single penny of the money that they collect for the purchase of land and home construction because they consider the purchase of land and development of a Negro community as segregating yourself. They're only interested in one thing, to get into every neighborhood, but build nothing yourself. Unfortunately, it's only a Negro minority of intellectuals and leftist Negro preachers who presume to speak for all of the Negro people. They try to silence all opposition by calling anybody who disagrees with them as Uncle Tom. If white immigrants can come to this country 50 years ago with nickels and dimes and no education and come here and pool their little nickels and dimes and no education and set up little stores, develop these stores into larger stores, develop this into an industry which creates job opportunities for whites. And today the black man, according to the government economist, has spending power of $20 billion per year. We feel that with the black man spending $20 billion a year, not setting up any businesses, not creating any industry, not creating any job opportunities for his own kind, He's not in a moral position to point the finger today at the white man and tell the white man that he's discriminating against him for not giving him a job in factories that he has he himself set up. If the black man has $20 billion and these so-called Negro leaders are such geniuses that they can integrate white restaurants and integrate white factories and integrate, force themselves into that which the white man has set up, they should use this same ingenuity to show the black people how to pool our wealth and set up something of our own. There's a reason we were taught to see integration as a solution to a problem as opposed to a problem to a solution. I feel like a complete asshole because I never thought about that. Like that whole time they did the boycott, they should have been trying to establish their own bus company oh, as opposed to wanting to ride. I never thought about that. Y'all boycotted for a year just to want to ride on the front? See, you're a smart man. <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> but, you, but you got it now. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Leave whatever comments you want in the comment section and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Donald Trump is suggesting that we have a purge. And people are cheering and clapping for it. At one of his rallies, he just suggested that in order to deter crime and to bring down crime, we should have a really rough day. Put, put a guy like Mike Kelly, Congressman Mike Kelly in charge. And I guess he has a team, I presume police force or military or whatever the case. But I'm sure there'll be some militia groups as well. You know which ones. To just be really harsh and it'll be so bad a really violent day to bring down crime I've always thought it was interesting when you know art mimicked reality right like based on true stories things of that nature but it's kind of worrisome when reality starts to mimic art I've always said that project 2025 put in mind for me and America from The Handmaid's Tale. The subjugation of women, a ruling class, dictating class, pretty much enslaved people, uh, out of control police force, military. But now he's suggesting the purge. The purge. It's spooky, real spooky. Be one fam in the words of Professor Black Truth. Power tools. That is all. You will be getting blocked after I make this video, but this is why I don't like women. Oh, that's her job. She took a position to be evil. You got paid to take away people off of the street. You got paid to imprison a mother for being at the hospital with her child while her child was basically dying because of truancy, because you quote unquote love money. I find it weird. I find it weird how you are making this comment as if that's any better. Baby, I'm never going to support somebody who was a prosecutor. I'm never going to support you because you're playing God. Because you're supporting a system that was built off of harming other people for imprisoning people for the benefit of, of these corporations. You are legit putting people in prison. Because it benefits the government, not because you truly want them to change, not because you truly want to help them make better choices, because it's beneficial for the American government. I am never going to take a position where I am imprisoning people and they're treated like animals. Women are evil, especially when I'm going at black and brown people more than anybody else disrespectfully the fact that you imprisoned that mother for taking care of her child the fact that you put men in prison for selling marijuana when you smoked it baby stop talking to me i don't like women i don't like y'all the spell them demonic democrats got y'all under should be studied 
like them twitches with a w and them toy locks with a w is working overtime because what is going on you know somebody is a terrible leader by how many excuses the people following them got to make for them you know somebody is a terrible leader by how much the leader don't even take accountability for any of the part that they play in the mess that they made in situations you know somebody's a terrible leader by how much the leader got to play the blame game and the people following them have to play the blame game in order for anything to make sense like somebody pinched me i think i'm dreaming and I'm trying to make it make sense, but 1 plus 1 is equal in 17. It's not making sense. I don't know if it's not making sense because Joe and Kamala is the worst administration, I think, ever. Like, I truly believe that they're the worst administration ever, and I voted for them, sadly. I played a part in this foolishness, but my mistake. Kamala has been around for the last three and a half years. Everybody forgot everybody existed, literally. She forgot we existed. I forgot she existed. Y'all forgot she existed. The media does this thing, which they are really good at. I'm going to give them credit because they do this thing where they rebrand her, revamp her, and now it's like, oh, my God, we love you, even though she's been around for the last three and a half years and nobody loved each other. Nobody even paid anybody any attention it's the weirdest thing ever to me and then y'all do this weird thing where she was sworn in as the first indian asian vice president but now she's black and it's just like what and then the cats and dogs got y'all in an uproar but then an indian woman telling you that she washes her greens in the tub with feet fungus and booty juice that made you feel warm and cuddly inside and that made you want to ask for the recipe i've been to many church events pastor anniversaries family reunions birthday parties all the things with hundreds of black people and ain't nobody ever had to wash greens in the tub that's disgusting but that made y'all feel good weird one of the craziest excuses that y'all came up with was that a vice president has no power. And I'm guessing Joe caught wind of that. And he got tired of y'all saying that. Because then he did an interview on The View saying that this lady has just as much power as him. There is nothing that he could do that she can't do. And he was delegating all type of tasks to her. Which I'm like, that's the first time I actually agree with Joe. Because I'm like, duh. I mean, who didn't think the vice president had any power? But obviously y'all did. And then they have y'all doing, this is where I think the spell comes in at. When they be having y'all at them rallies chanting, stop. Stop chanting. That is the problem. When they have y'all saying, we're not going back. What are you talking? They have y'all actually thinking that you're escaping someone other than them. We're turning the page. Close the book. We don't want another chapter of this. This is actually insane. But they have y'all chanting this weirdness and y'all actually be chanting it. Weird. They have literally beat Project 2025 and y'all so bad that y'all have literally became petrified of Project 2025 just for the people that wrote Project 2025 to come out and endorse Kamala. And now let me guess, because y'all's the spell is crazy. Now Project 2025 is not all of a sudden so bad when everybody told y'all that it was fake. But they y'all y'all allowed them people to fear monger you so much that you actually thought it was real. You actually was losing sleep thinking that Project 2025 is a thing, and then they came out and endorsed Kamala. Weird. Then you have the abortion buses on wheels, but then there's no abortion buses at the border. Weird. And then you have a campaign ran on offing babies when really we could just practice safe sex, not have sex, or get on some type of birth control so that way babies don't have to keep getting murked. And your taxpayer dollars don't have to keep getting funded to mark babies, children, women, and other innocent people. Then you have Kamala and them, the Democrats, like last week wanting to pass a bill to allow... And this is why I told y'all I would never be a girl's girl because y'all can never make this make sense to me. But this is what girls' girls do. Honestly, if anybody ever called me a girl's girl, I would literally feel like I'm failing that life because this is prime example of girls' girls just emotional and they don't think. But let's just let's give a, a let's break down the whole girls' girl situation, right? Tell me if this makes sense. So you have Kamala and the Democrats trying to pass a bill last week so that. Illegal immigrants, if they were to sexually abuse somebody, sexually assault somebody, they're not sent back to their country because Kamala don't want to demonize them. They're not demons. And she also mentioned multiple times that they're not criminals, even though 13,000 of the like millions of illegal immigrants that they let in the country are known. And then thousands more are actual known sexual assaulters. But who cares because we're giving you the convenience to off your baby. If we place any of these people who we don't even know, we can't even identify into your neighborhoods 
we're not keeping you safe, but we're going to give you the convenience to off your baby if something do happen. What? Make it make sense. It don't. But then also you have this hurricane that literally have taken people's lives, homes, livelihoods, cars, literally their entire life is changed. People were sitting and stuck on their roof, no power, no electricity. And Joe Biden just allocated billions of more dollars to Ukraine, at least at least if their ports was closing and they were hit by a hurricane, we know you can't. Ukraine won't be straight on our taxpayer dollars. But then Joe Biden came out and said he don't have nothing else for the people that was affected by the hurricane. FEMA don't have money. So these people are just out of luck. And then it's like four more hurricanes brewing right now. Weird. And on to the ports closing. Um, tomorrow they are set to go on strike. Thousands and thousands and thousands of employees want what they are rightfully owed. They want more compensation for the part that they play into bringing our goods into this country. So our food, medicine, all the things that we need, car parts, housing parts, all of those things um, that come into the country, they're going on strike. So for every day that they're on strike, it's like setting the United States back seven days. But Joe Biden said he's not getting involved. Of course you aren't, Joe. We expected nothing less of you. Like, it's so weird. It's honestly strange. But hey, anything is better than Trump, right? Anything is better than them. And, I, and when I truly say anything, I truly mean anything. Anything is better than them. The fact that y'all actually want four more years of this is insane. Because you got off your baby. And the NFL just signed a deal with FEMA to make the stadiums a place like in case of a disaster or an emergency. Y'all take y'all behinds in them people's stadium if you want to, especially if you black. That is insane. Don't I don't care if you have to go live in the woods. Make that the last of the last of the last option. But then they just did that because they signed over America's sovereignty to the WHO, which means in a state of an emergency or whatever they deem an emergency, they're able to make rules and put things into place to dictate what goes on in the case of an emergency. What? People were stuck on their roofs from this hurricane, literally stuck on their roofs, probably still stuck on their roofs. And Kamala and Joe is missing action. They have not said nothing. They have not done anything. And have not even tried to go get these people off the roofs. However, they're actively flying illegal immigrants into the country, literally on an airplane. And I wish that was a lie. I wish that because that sounds insane to me, but it's happening. Like you can say, they're, they're the prime example of you can say whatever you want to say. You can say Americans first, Americans first, and Americans first. But their actions prove Americans last. Literally. I mean, everything that they do. And then a lot of y'all are on this weird egotistical pride trip to where y'all will go with anything simply because you cannot be wrong or whatever. It's, it's strange. We all hear it. Kamala and the Dems all saying that Trump is a part of the Project 2025 agenda, correct? Look it up. And that was proposed by the Heritage Foundation. If y'all are following, well, follow this. If President Trump is a part of the 2025 agenda, then why the hell is the Heritage Foundation endorsing Kamala? Please answer that for me, because it makes no sense at all. If they are proposing for Trump to go through with this 2025 agenda, they would be backing him up. People, I don't know if you don't see it like I see it. It's all aimed at Trump. It ain't them versus Republican I'm seeing. It's them versus him. And why would they come together like this to stop that man unless he's the only one to stop that agenda from happening? Look at today. Look at what's going on in our country. And tell me you trust for them to stay for another four years if, if it don't change about that they're in power permanently. We don't know what they really are planning to do to us, but I do know one thing. It ain't good for the American people. Now, y'all can hate on Trump. You can do whatever you want to do. You can say my post is crazy as hell, but I'm going to tell you like it is. Put 
them in office and see what's going to happen to this country. And the sad thing is, once it happens, if that happens, ain't no turning back. We all got to live with it. Shia Jackson, a 43-year-old mother on the south side of Chicago, was killed by her 17-year-old son. The reality is a lot of people won't help, but they don't know how to get it. So this is for people in Illinois who are ready to get help and just don't know what steps to take. If you know somebody that needs this information, write it down, pass it along. Go to abe.illinois.gov in order to sign up for a Medicaid medical card uh, or Medicare medical, medical services to get the mental health and behavior health um, services that you're needing. If you already have a medical card, you can call 855-828-4995 in order to access some of those same mental health and behavior health services. If you have Meridian, contact 888-867-1129 to get connected with the providers that are in your area. If you need to speak with someone at the advice nurse line, call 866, and this is from Meridian, 866-606-3700. Press 2 and then press 5. If you need to connect with the behavioral health section, you call that same number, 866-606-3700. You press 2 and then you press 7. This will put you in connection with... Um, individuals who are qualified to give you the exact information that you're needing to get the help um, that that you know you or your loved ones are needing. The Department um, of Human Services is going to be always uh, a resource that can help. And I think we need to acknowledge that sometimes it's not easy to ask for help, but if we don't, what are the ramifications of sitting and being silent? This is one of those situations, what the young lady was speaking about and the stitch that's before this one. Y'all take care. Good Tuesday morning. And once again, oh, my name is Constance Washington and I get up here to tell the world how down these homes of Elizabeth City stole my land with the help of Chowan County Superior Court. And um, this is part two. I did a video this morning, believe it or not, and I'm glad I saved it, but somehow, some way, it disappeared. Um, this is what you got to go through. Like I said in my first video, we have to pull ourselves up by our bootstrings. Um, also, I just want to let everybody know um, up here, don't, you know, who want to keep your page, unfortunately, we can't hashtag Black TikTok, okay? So if you hashtag Black TikTok, more than likely, your... Uh, page is eventually going to get banned see this is the thing even tiktok do it to us it's no it's no biggie and, and it's no secret everybody know it they don't know how to treat you but they don't want you to leave okay so they want your business they want you to continue to stay but then they don't know how to treat you so they don't want you to hashtag black tiktok too many people going over to black tiktok you're going to get um banned so don't hashtag black tiktok if you want to keep your page and that's the same thing they did and i'm gonna have to speak in codes because if i don't they're gonna ban my page that's the same thing they did back in the days when a lot of um our loved ones let's say it like that um wanted to leave the um south and come up here so they can have a better life okay so what they did was they packed up and they was on their way. And um, they got met in the middle of the night with the, um, you know what, and they unalived them. And they did horrible, horrible things. So with that being said, um, I can't keep elaborating on it, but you guys get the picture. They don't know how to treat you, but they don't want you to leave. So with me and my house, they wanted my money, but they didn't want me there. They wanted to take my money, but they didn't want me there. For example, when I went into a um, contract with Downey Homes of Elizabeth City to build me a four-bedroom home that was in the contract with upstairs for f with future electricity and future plumbing. And the reason why I'm saying it like that, because um, they was not supposed to complete the upstairs because it was too much. So 
but they were supposed to run future electricity and future plumbing because again I had children that was in the service and that was in college so I had two years to play with so I have family members that's contractors as well but not in North Carolina so my plan was as the kids started coming home and getting jobs and helping out helping me out I was going to start getting the rooms built y'all know it ain't nothing to throw some sheetrock and walls up you know it's nothing to, and, and, and installation and it's nothing to that you know I could go to Home Depot and get me a few guys that could, I have family members that can do do that so I told them don't complete the upstairs and then I found out that with modular homes, they can't do the upstairs anyway. They could do a higher pitch, but they can't do an upstairs. So it's a lot of things that I found out after the fact. So all that time, they strung me along. When I was telling them that I wanted four bedrooms upstairs, they knew then that they couldn't do the upstairs. They knew then. That's why they gave me a price and was like, oh, that's going to cost you an extra $100,000. That's why they ninety thousand dollars. They didn't say a hundred. They said ninety. I want to say exactly what they said, so nobody can't say I'm lying on them. They said, "Oh, that's going to be an extra ninety thousand dollars for four bedrooms and two bathrooms." That's what I was going to get upstairs. So they knew they threw a price out that they knew I couldn't afford. So I said, "Okay, don't do the bedrooms upstairs. Just run future electricity and future plumbing, and I'll get my family members to come down." You know, I got two years to play with the complete the upstairs. They already knew. So I'm finding out after the fact that they couldn't do upstairs anyway. You know what I'm saying? So now I know why they never completed upstairs. And then when I told them when a year went by and they didn't break ground, and I, I got my emails, I showed them. I showed the, um, um, the Department of Justice. I showed the FBI. I showed everybody. I showed them. I show every government official, everybody. I sent all my proof and all my information and come to find out the only reason why they want you to send your proof and your information is because they want to know what you got. So they could tell the so they could tell them, oh, she got this proof, that proof. Y'all better get figure out a way to 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 to, to justify for what y'all did to her. They all work together. Okay, so anyway, back to the story. And I went into contract with them. And a year went by, even though they told me my home was going to be ready seven, eight months, I gave them a whole year. A whole year went by, they didn't break ground. When I called them and told them and emailed them, and I even went down there and spoke to them, that I'm going to move on to another company, I don't like the relationship. I didn't like how they was talking to me anyway. Miss Washington, why you keep calling here? They didn't want me to ask them no questions about my house. And I'm like, well, y'all said y'all building a house. Can I see some pictures? They took all, they took my dream. They took my dream of getting my home built away from me. They took it away from me. You know, I'm telling all my family, friends, and neighbors, oh, I'm getting my house built. Every, I, I wasn't the only one getting my house built. I had other coworkers that was getting their house built. They had pictures. Oh, look, this is the, and I'm calling them. I said, well, where's my pictures? Not that they was using Downey's homes. Of course, they was using somebody else. But the company they was using, they had pictures, and the people was contacting them, keeping them. You know, keeping them informed of what was going on. Down these homes of Elizabeth City wouldn't even call me. And then when I called them, they wouldn't answer. You know why, y'all? They wanted this to happen because they never planned on building my house properly. They planned on taking one of their sample homes and dropping it on my property from the beginning. When I walked in there, a single mother with 10 kids, she's eager, she's happy. I walked in there all happy. They already knew what they was going to do. Oh, we got a victim. They knew what they was going to do from the beginning. She don't got no money to pay for no lawyer. She going to give up. Psych. Psych. See, they didn't know I was a clerk. Okay? Because when I went down to North Carolina to get my home built, I went down on official. I, didn't, I wasn't on official business. I went down there on official business but about my house. It didn't have nothing to do with where I work or who I was or my job. Okay, so therefore, when I saw them doing all type of corrupt shit, I was like, wait a minute, I know this is North Carolina and the laws is a little bit different, but the state laws may be a little different, but the federal government laws, are what is these people down here doing? They was doing all kinds of, all, listen, they didn't know I knew. They was doing all kinds of crooked stuff. Okay, I filed a notice of appeal. They still sold my land. 
okay? The, the, the sheriff department was checking off boxes on the writ of execution that wasn't checked off, okay? The, there was a judge that came from Pitt County on Columbus Day and granted the default judgment on my property and they and my, my the case started in Chowin County guys and they sent me to Pergamus County changed my venue without even ask, asking me they sent me because because I was in New York and they was hoping I didn't show up they sent me to Pergamus County on Columbus Day a federal holiday because they thought I wasn't going to show up because when I googled it it said all oh, the courts was closed my court was closed so I said Wait a minute, they do a lot of stuff in North Carolina, but I went because it was about my land and I didn't trust them. I drove all the way down to North Carolina. This judge is from Pitt County. He thought I, see one thing about me, I do my research. I do my research. He comes out of his house on Columbus Day to help his cut buddy out. Ain't nobody stupid kickbacks, okay? Marvin K. Blunt came out of his house on Columbus Day. All came all the way from Pitt County to Pergamus County and granted the default judgment on my land. I didn't even get a chance to speak. I didn't even, that's why they keep telling you to get an attorney because they don't want you to talk on the record. He, blah, 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 granted. I'm like, what the hell just happened? Okay? He just granted the default judgment, got up and left. And you're going to tell me that wasn't a setup? That was a setup. But see, what they thought, they thought I was going to say, okay. They stole my land and walk away, but no. And this is what I told y'all. This is for um, educational purposes only. I'm not an attorney, but I'm gonna let y'all know something. Don't ever give up. Don't ever, ever give up. Put in notices of appeals, and that's what I did. I put in a notice of appeals. They tried to get my notice of appeals. They tried to get my notice of appeals dismissed. How you dismiss a notice of appeal? I'm going to a higher court. But this is what they do because they think we don't know. And if you don't know, you don't know. Somebody told me that they got their notice of this appeal dismissed. How? But this is what they do, illegal. Now I want to switch gears and I want to talk about the United States of America. And I want to tell you a story about the United States of America that most of you don't know. Certainly most Americans don't know this story because we have this idealistic story about noble America that bears little resemblance to reality. The United States, and what I'm going to do here is try and convince you that the United States since 1783 in terms of foreign policy has acted according to my theory. That's what I'm going to try and do. 1783, the United States started out as 13 measly colonies strung out along the Atlantic seaboard. What did we do? We marched across the continent to the Pacific Ocean. We murdered huge numbers of Native Americans. We stole their land. We went to war with Mexico in the middle of the 19th century, and we stole from Mexico what is now the southwest of the United States. We invaded Canada in 1812 for the express purpose of making Canada part of the United States. For those of you who don't know, the reason Toronto is not the capital of Canada and Ottawa is the capital of Canada is they expected us to pay a return visit. Furthermore, with regard to the Caribbean, we'd own all the Caribbean now. Places like Cuba and Puerto Rico would be American states if it weren't for the fact that it was inextricably tied up with the issue of slavery. And the northern states said, we're not going into the Caribbean because there are too many slaves down there. Those are slaveholding states, and we don't want any more slaveholding states. We had a voracious appetite for conquest. Adolf Hitler, when he went into the Soviet Union in the summer of 1941, sometimes talked about imitating the Americans and their ability to conquer and gain territory. He admired us greatly. He was trying to emulate us. He referred to the Volga, uh, the Volga River as my Mississippi. That's how the United States was created, an expansionist country like we've never seen on the planet before. But that's just the first part of our attempt to create regional hegemony. The second thing we did was the Monroe Doctrine. In 1823, old President James Monroe, he told the Europeans, we're not powerful enough to throw you out now. But there's going to come a day where we're going to run you out of the Western Hemisphere, and once we run you out, you're not welcome back. This is our hemisphere. We run it. No distant great powers are allowed in our hemisphere. It's the Monroe Doctrine. 
first part of the story I told you is called Manifest Destiny, marching across the continent from the Atlantic to the Pacific, creating this huge state, importing huge numbers of people, industrializing the country. And then the second part of the story is the Monroe Doctrine, getting the European great powers, the British, the French, the Spanish, all out of the Western Hemisphere. And of course, by 1898, we had done that. We had created regional hegemony. What was our second goal? Our second goal, as I told you, was make sure we didn't have a peer competitor. We did not want any other country on the planet to dominate its region the way we dominate the Western Hemisphere. We had four potential peer competitors in the 20th century. Imperial Germany, Imperial Japan, Nazi Germany, and the Soviet Union. We helped contain and defeat all four of them. We helped put all four of them on the scrap heap of history. We entered World War I when it looked like the Germans were going to win in April of 1917 and helped finish them off. With regard to the Japanese, we beat them single-handedly in World War II, and we helped the Soviet Union, which played the key role in defeating Nazi Germany in World War II. And then, of course, the United States played the principal role in containing the Soviet Union during the Cold War, and then we gladly ushered them down the toilet bowl when they fell apart. The United States does not tolerate peer competitors. That's my basic story.